You could see the air go out of the building if you were a Loyola fan. That was the whole thing. They nice it on free throws. Oregon State going to the Elite Eight for the first time since 1982. Pac-12, 10-1 in this dance. There you go. Oregon State, just the second 12 seed since, you know, 1979 when they started really beginning seeding. To get to that Elite Eight, Missouri, the other team in 2002. Before that, 12 seeds are 1-20 in at this round. Now they're 2-20. Remember, this team was picked to finish last in the conference. And, uh, man, it's unbelievable. Oregon State was getting seven. They win the money line plus 250. Everybody on our program told you to take the under. Under came in. Afterwards, here's Dana Jacobson with a very happy Coach Wayne Tickle. I know, I know. Coach, just the second 12th seed ever to get to the Elite Eight. Your kids weren't even born the last time Oregon State was there. What does this mean? Uh, it means the world. I'm, I'm just so immensely proud of this group. Uh, it just the ride continues, you know, and it was ugly. We knew it was going to be a slugfest, but we never, we never doubted ourselves. We kept rallying each other and all the timeouts, and we just, we, we played unbelievable defense. The message is on your shirt there, 12 to 16. You got to the round of 16, now to the Elite Eight. We've seen so much poise out of this team. What else can they do right now? Hey, we're just, we defend and we hang in there. We, we think we can beat anybody in the country. And uh, this is six in a row. It's a hell of a ride, uh, you know, and the guys are listening to all the media stuff and, and we don't get involved in any of that. We just got to stay focused, keep doing our deal, take them one at a time and keep, keep moving on. Congratulations, Coach. Go Thanks enjoy. so much. Go Beavs. All right, so let's take a look at what they've done. They go into the Pac-12. They beat UCLA, a tournament team who's won multiple tournament games and is still alive. They beat Oregon, tournament team, multiple tournament games. They're still alive. They beat Colorado, who beat Georgetown by like 140 points and won, you know, the tournament game before they were eliminated. Then they show up at the tournament. They knock off Tennessee for the third straight win where they were getting eight and a half points. Then they beat Oklahoma State by Cowpokes. And now they take care of Sister Jean and Loyola Chicago. I mean, they're underdogs in all of these. They are on fire. If you look at it, they are 18-3-1 against the number in their last 22 games. Afterwards, Dana Jacobson with Ethan Thompson. And boy, can this kid get it done. Ethan, congratulations. I don't know if you are aware, just the second 12th seed ever to get to the Elite Eight. What does that mean to your Beavers team? That's, that's so crazy. I had no idea. You know, we're extremely blessed. Uh, we've worked hard all year, and, you know, we're just enjoying the moment right now. The coach talked about how loose you guys have been playing in this streak that you've had. How are you able to do that under the pressure that you are under right mm -hmm. now? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just we got a great group of guys, great character. Um, you know, it's fun to be around them for one so it's always easy to play loose and have confidence in each other and you know we keep getting wins so we're just trying to ride the way for sure any message you have for bud Ossie, your 101 year old <laughs> fan and all your fans back in corvallis right now <laughs> we love them go beeves let's keep it going congratulations thank you so much appreciate it yeah that's right coming in today these seeds, the 12 in this round, one win, 20 losses. Now it's two win, 20 losses. There they are, the two winners. 2002, 2021. 12 seed, getting it done. And a boy, Oregon State, they had that run at the end of the first half. And a pretty comfortable trip. I mean, you got a little bit of a run from, and they were chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, but never really had the ball with a chance to tie it. And then uh, the big shot by Lucas made the lead seven, and that was it. Now let's get Matt Norlander into the mix here. He is in Indy. He was in the building. This is an unprecedented Final Four. It's an empty barn, pretty much. You saw the game. I, I didn't. You know, there, there's no crowd swell when Loyola starts coming back. What was it like compared to other Final Fours? We're not. We're not there. You are. BRIs and ears. How was this different? Well. 
for you know, it was weird to be in the building for a Sweet 16 game at 25 percent capacity. But Loyola was actually outpacing Oregon State fans about 90 to 10. There are many people on the street here, by the way, so it actually feels like a Final Four right now outside. I got to be honest here. But that three pointer by Jared Lucas was huge. I mean, credit to Wayne Tinkle and Oregon State again. The Pac-12 continues to thrive. Only one loss in this tournament so far, and that was Colorado last week. So congrats. Only, as you said, EK, only the second time a 12 has made a regional final, Missouri being the other 19 years ago, and Missouri didn't make the final four, which means two days from now, Oregon State will try and make history and become the first 12 to get to a final four. And the Pac-12 is going to get at least two in. There's no way they can have less than two in the Elite Eight based upon this. Um, 40 combined points in the first half, 83 in the second half. It was a weird first half. It looked like a scrum. The officials were letting them knock it around. Nobody could knock down a shot. I mean, when Loyola looks back at this game, what's going to be their lament here? One thing they couldn't control was Oregon State's uh, wonderful free throw shooting. That's been two games in a row here. i got to reference my stats here just to make sure I got this right. Oregon State was 18 of 20 from the foul line. This is after going 32 of 35 against Oklahoma State to move along. But then it was the three-point shooting. Five of 23 for Loyola Chicago. I think the, the poor three-point shooting, despite really good looks for Loyola, it's going to be a lament. Lucas Williamson, he, a, a critical senior. We saw those heartbreaking images on the sideline afterward, embracing his fellow senior Cameron Crutwig. They went to a Final Four together as freshmen. He was not reliable in the first half because he had foul trouble. He missed a couple of open shots there. Um, I got to be honest, when, I was, when this was playing out and, and Loyola Chicago was making its push and trying to get closer and got closer, it didn't quite get there because the threes wouldn't fall and they hurt themselves on the foul line there. Oregon State deserves to win this game, but Loyola put itself in that situation. I think it started 4 of 24 from the field in this game. It's just, when you're playing a power conference opponent, it is so hard to come back from that kind of deficit. Loyola couldn't pull it off. Oregon State moves along. I want to give a shout to Ethan Thompson, who continues to be really a, a critical player for this Beavers team. And without him, they don't, they don't move along. He didn't hit the big shot that kind of was the nail in the coffin, but he was by far the most important player on the floor in this game. I think you, you, you knocked it stiff there. I mean, look, the free throws are amazing. But 50 out of 55 in the last two games. I mean, they're just going to the line. Here you go. Give me one. Give me two. Now you get the ball out. And Loyola did miss some big free throws. Front end of one and one. They missed two in a row uh, when they really needed it. Missed both of those. A and the second thing was, I mean, Loyola just, they couldn't throw in the ocean. We were talking at halftime, other than Cameron Crutwig, the entire Loyola team had made one bucket. One. The entire half. And again, if it's not only a 40-point half, Boy, they, you think that maybe it becomes a little different uh, thing here. Um, when you look at Oregon State, when you saw them up close, what sort of stood out to you when you looked at this team? I mean, it's just strange. They have just suddenly found it. What did they find when you walk in them at that, looking at this team in person? Well, part of this was the zone that they threw at Loyola Chicago, which uh, was extremely effective. So that was part of it there. And, you know, we don't know who Oregon State's going to play. That's going to be the last game of the night between Syracuse and Houston there. But I saw a team really sound defensively. Like, I still, this is not like one of the 20 best teams in college basketball. It is playing well at the right time. It has won now six consecutive winner go home games it's unreal Wayne Tinkle has uh, has tapped into something here that has really provided one of the most unexpected NCAA tournament runs of the past two decades let's not understate this okay Oregon State has only made two NCAA tournaments in 30 years Wayne Tinkle's responsible for both of those and for and just because it's from the Pac-12 and a power conference it was 10 and 10 in the league. It was 10 and 10 20 games into its season. They have clearly found something, and credit to them. They've made the baskets they need to make defensively. He's done a wonderful job. Their tempo works. They continue to believe. And it is it is really because it's not doesn't come because Oregon State's not from a, a small league, Eric, 
I think it doesn't get quite as much love here because, you know, it is a Pac-12 program. But for all intents and purposes, this is one of the toughest gigs in all of Power Conference basketball. And what they've been able to do has been fantastic. Ethan Thompson leads the way, no doubt about it. But I think their, their overall, their defensive imprint has made a has made real impact here. And uh, Tinkle has, has turned the fortunes of this program, not just in this tournament, but obviously stuff like this gives you so much momentum going forward next year, the year after, recruiting and elsewhere. Yeah, they, uh, they've clearly found it on both ends. Like, they dig in on defense. They are size with Silva. They can now shoot it a little bit. They got some players. And, and they're going to be a tough out before this thing is all over. Excellent job. He's now going to switch arenas. Go to the next one. Matt Norland will be with us all day right here on HQ. All right, so here's the bracket. By the way, I just want to point out, if you're the Houston Cougars, someone tells you at the start of the tournament, you got to beat a 15 seed, a 10 seed, an 11 seed, and a 12 seed, and you're in the Final Four. They literally cannot face a single-digit seed until the Final Four. Houston has been given the single easiest road in the history of this tournament seed-wise. I mean, I didn't do the research. I, it just has to be. I mean, you can't. I mean, a 10, 11, a 12, and a 15, and you're in. Sometimes they make it so. Hey, if you don't get it done, it ain't Barry White's fault. You know what I mean? Put Barry White on, you make your move. She says, no, it ain't Barry White's fault. Houston, you don't get to the Final Four, it ain't Barry White's fault. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.